If you need to virtualize your Ethernet connections between your routers uh, through a switched infrastructure or through a service provider cloud that requires you to put Ethernet tags on those frames prior to them getting sent into the cloud, stand by because I'm going to show you how to do it. We're going to do it in classic iOS and we're going to do it in iOS XE, which is what like an ASR 1000 or a... Um, virtual CSR 1000 V runs iOS XE. All right, we're going to introduce some newer concepts uh, as far as uh, virtualizing an Ethernet port using service instances, otherwise known as Ethernet flow points. So let's get into it. Check out some of my previous videos where I introduced Cisco Modeling Labs. It's a nice place to lab test certain technologies and protocols. Here's where we're going to implement a uh, VLAN between this iOS, this classic iOS router, through this classic iOS switch to this iOS XE CSR1000V, which kind of mimics what an ASR1000 would look like. All right, so not going to spend too much time talking about the Cisco Modeling Lab environment. Like I said, check out some of my previous videos. I'll try to drop some links down below or in the pop-out cards, and let's just get down into this. I'm going to name these routers iOS V-0, just like these tags show, or iOS VL2-0, or CSR1000 V-0. Okay, there we go. This one is named iOS V-0. It's the hostname command, and it's the same command on each one of these. iOS VL2-0 and CSR 1000 V-0. Now we can tell them apart as we proceed through this uh, lab demonstration of how to put ethernet tags between two routers. Okay, and you might recall from my previous video that if you look at the interfaces as they are, 192.168.101.1 is on this port right here. You know, these tags behind the node, you can't see them. If you click on the link, it'll tell you iOS V-0 is gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1. So that's what's back there that you can't see. You can't see that one right there either. If you click on the link, it'll say CSR 1000 V-0 is gigabit Ethernet 1. All right. So we see that on iOS V-0, we have this address. 192.168.101.1. Let's copy that. If we jump over here to this one, show run interface G1, we have 101.2. So just to show that we currently have connectivity, we can ping dot one from dot two. So we're pinging through this switch. And I'm going to show you real quick, very nice. Uh, if you click on this link, you can go to packet capture, start the packet capture, and we're already seeing spanning tree coming from this switch going over to here. If we click on this, and it already it always resizes the screen, it's kind of annoying. But if we hit ping, ping it again, go back to that um, packet capture, and we can see, there we go. Echo request, echo reply from 101. Let me move this over a little bit. From 101.2 to 101.1, we are pinging back and forth. All right, and what I want to show you is it's vanilla Ethernet with no tags. 0800. All right, we don't see any Ethernet tags in there, coming or going. Okay? And also, if we go over to the switch, we can see show MAC address table. And we see we're learning a MAC address on G01 and G00, which are the two ports of the switch. So we're able to pass traffic between it. We can verify the switch is doing its job. So let's proceed to do away with this vanilla untagged Ethernet, and let's put VLAN 100 all the way through. So here's the configuration about how we're going to change this from vanilla untagged Ethernet into VLAN tags. On the iOS V router, we're going to go into the port. 
We're going to remove the IP address with no IP address. We're going to then create a subinterface. We'll call it dot 100. You could really call it anything. What's important is the dot 1Q VLAN tag. So we're going to use VLAN 100 all the way through. So that's what's important. So we'll call the sub, you know, it's nice for convention or good practice to use a sub interface that mimics or uh, signifies what kind of VLAN number you're using. And then we add the IP address to it and we save the config. In the, the iOS layer two device, we're gonna go into config mode, create the VLAN, and then we're going to go to the gigabit port and we're going to trunk that VLAN number. We're gonna turn on encapsulation.1q and we're gonna set the mode to trunking. And we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other port that faces the CSR1000V, all right? And we will save the config. On the CSR1000V, go into config mode. We create a bridge domain. We go into the physical port and we will need to remove the IP address with no IP address. Then we're gonna create what's called a service instance. Put encapsulation on it. Rewrite ingress tag pop one symmetric means you are going to um, you're going to add this VLAN number dot one Q upon well what rewrite means upon ingress we're going to tag pop one VLAN okay so rewrite the ingress traffic by popping one tag. The word symmetric means we're going to do the opposite in the egress direction. So we're going to push one tag. And so that tag that we're going to push on there is going to be VLAN 100. Then you put that service instance in a bridge domain, 100. That's the bridge domain it gets put into. And then we're going to create an Ethernet, or excuse me, interface BDI, bridged, no, bridge domain interface BDI, and we're going to call it 100. That one, that number 100 is going to bind it to the bridge domain 100. Then we will add that IP address that was previously on the physical port onto the BDI. So let's get going. Okay, let's copy this config for the iOS router. Let's go in here, enable mode, paste it. There we go. So now show IP interface brief, we see that we now have a subinterface.100 with that IP address on there. Let's copy that. Let's paste it. Ping. Oops. Sorry about that. I accidentally closed my window. Let's ping the other side. Dot two. We see that we can no longer ping because we have a VLAN configured over here, but not one over here. So let's keep going. Let's go into the switch, create the VLAN, and put the ports into trunking mode and add that VLAN number to them. Paste that. All right, show MAC address table. Now, soon we should be learning a MAC address for that traffic that's being sent through there. Oh, not yet. Show IP interface brief. Ah, I think it's because spanning tree. Show spanning tree VLAN 100. We're still learning, listening and learning. And until we start forwarding, there we go, now we're forwarding. And now, we have a MAC address on port zero from the iOS V router. Let's keep going. Let's get over here to the CSR 1000 V router. I don't know if that no IP address is gonna work without me specifying it. Let's see, paste that. Do show run interface G1. Yep, it sure did. Okay, let's keep going. Let's create that service instance and the subsequent BDI, paste that into there. Let's come out. Let's go back over to this router over here. Let's try that ping again. And let's investigate what's going on. 
So we can see that we're not able to ping yet. If we come over here to CSR1000V, I typed show ARP, wasn't seeing anything right away. If you type show bridge domain, it says in bridge domain 100, we have two ports in all. And so we are seeing a BDI. Ah, it's administratively down. All right. So let's look at that. Show IP interface brief. So apparently when you create a BDI, it's down by default. No shut. Let's come out. We see the BDI change state to up. It says it there. It says it there. Two log messages. Ah, and there's our pings. Look at that. So it's working now. Very good. Let's go back over here to the switch. Let's look at our Mac table. We have Mac entries coming and going on both ports. And something else I wanted to show you, when you show bridge domain, clear the screen a little bit, it tells you with a hash mark, the BDI uh, has a MAC address associated with it. And we are learning a MAC address on gigabit port one dot EFP 100. So show run interface G1. Where do you see EFP in here? You don't. <laughs> you see the word service instance, but a service instance is also known as an ethernet flow point. And so I just wanted to make a comment about that, that in service provider networks or networks of today, they uh, have a lot of different concepts associated with the, the ability to uh, bridge Ethernet across gigabit ports, even in routers, into bridge domains, and do various in interesting, interesting things with them, like decouple the VLAN space from the backplane. So a lot of, you know, back in the day, you were limited to 4,000 VLANs across your entire network, okay? It's because you weren't able to decouple the VLAN from a port, and it had to be it, it, the VLAN was carried throughout the whole network. Well, with Metro Ethernet, if you uh, look into the Metro Ethernet forum, MEF, they have a lot of standards and architectures for Ethernet in the wide area or in the metro area. And one of those is that at the uni or at a port between your router and the service provider cloud, that you can you can use uh, any you know all the VLANs on that port, but on another port on the same router, on the same CSR1000V, we'll go back over here and look at it, that if there was another port, let's say, for instance, coming off, um, you know, if I connected to another network over there, then I could have another 4,000 VLANs that had nothing to do with the other 4,000 VLANs that were previously configured on G1, for instance. All right, so you could use VLAN 10 on this port and VLAN 10 on another port, and never the two shall meet. If you're popping that VLAN before you bring it into the backplane and or uh, translating it. So there's a lot of different things you can do with those. And so those are known as service instances or Ethernet flow points. And so that's why you have this pushing and popping uh, so that you can get rid of the VLAN as it comes into the interface. Let, let me show you a little bit about that. I'll copy that. I'm going to paste that. So you can rewrite ingress tag. You can push or pop or translate. You can pop one. You can pop two. <laughs> you can push uh, an 802.1 alpha delta VLAN, which is known as an S tag or a service service provider tag to be specific. And, uh, or you can push an 802.1Q VLAN tag, okay? I think this one's 8100. This one's 88 alpha eight, I believe, if you look in the ethernet type field, all right? And so just various things you can do there with ethernet flow points. One other thing I want to mention with the uh, CSR1000V and iOS XE, we see we're still pinging. If we go over here to the CSR1000V, show run interface, excuse me, G1, show run interface BDI100. 
Now, we see that we're applying the encapsulation on the service instance, okay? If we were to also apply it to the BDI, I want you to be aware of a gotcha that I had seen previously, encapsulate.1q100. So let's go back over here. We're still pinging. Okay, 50 times. Go back over here. We're going to hit enter on that. We're going to go back over here and see if we can ping. And we cannot. So let, let's look at what's going on here. We now have the encapsulation.1q100 on the SVI of the physical port, the logical SVI, the Ethernet flow point, and we also have it on the BDI. Okay, so if we ping that address of the iOS router, dot one, we repeat that 50 times, let's get that going. Go over here to our sniffer, look at the packet capture, start it, and we look at the echo requests coming from dot two. So source 101.2, look at what we see. We have not one 802.1Q VLAN tag, but two. We have two 802.1Q VLAN tags, all right? So we are double tagging by virtue of the fact that we have put the encapsulation on both of these interfaces. So you might recall previously, we only had it on the SVI, excuse me, we only had it on the service instance, and now I added it to the BDI, and that broke our ability to communicate. Well, let's... Re so, as we saw on the sniffer, we're double Q tagging on the CSR1000V, thus breaking our ability to communicate with a single VLAN throughout this data link from end to end. So, we can see that we're still timing out. Let's go back over here to the CSR1000V. Let's remove that additional comment of encapsulation.1q100 on the BDI, excuse me, and now let's go back over here and we see that we can now ping. All right. Let me show you something else that's very nice with Ethernet flow points is you can look at the service and you can look at show Ethernet Ethernet service instance interface, uh, excuse me, let's look at uh, ID 100 interface G1. Okay, and so we see the service instance on G1. If you look at details, pipe it to section EFP. It's case sensitive. Look at that. So you can see packets in, packets out, bytes in, bytes out on a per VLAN basis. This is really nice. Okay, and so if we go over here, start up the ping, do it 2,000 times. Go over here and Packets in, packets out. It went from, what was it before? There we go. It went from 1800 to 3100. All right. So very nice that you can see uh, per VLAN statistics. Hey, I hope this was helpful in understanding VLAN tagging on router interfaces, classic iOS routers, or iOS XE routers in the form of the CSR1000V. And uh, hey, I look forward to the next video. Thank you.